I'm going to try to say HTTP3 in front of 500 people a lot of times. So, hi, HTTP3. Um, so, uh, I'm Daniel. I have this funny accent because I'm from Sweden. I started a little project, uh, I released it in 1998, and every one of you have it in your pockets, in your homes, in your servers, in your cars, everywhere. So, these days I work for WolfSSL. I do Carl full time. Uh, it's fun. So, I've been participating in the IETF for about 10 years, I think, maybe a little bit more. IETF being the organization that uh, works on internet standards and protocols in general, and in this case, HTTP3 and Quick in particular. So today I will tell you a little about, about the journey from HTTP 1, 2, 3, and some of the bumps along the way. What, what are the problems with these, and why are we going into the next uh, phase of internet transport protocols? So we're introducing Quick here. What is Quick? Why? How does it work? We do HTTP 3 over Quick, and some of the challenges with doing this, and possibly something about when we're going to see this. Maybe soon. Who knows? So I'm not going to bore you too much about uh, protocol details on everything, but this is not a, a done deal yet, so the specifications aren't done. It, uh, this hasn't shipped, so you can still change a little bit. Uh, but go ahead. Um, I, don't, I only have 40 minutes on this, so I'm going to cram in as much details as possible. So, uh, yeah, yeah, let's go. HTTP 1 wasn't the first HTTP version, but uh, we got it in the late 90s. Uh, it looked like that, you know. <laughs> uh, it feels like that anyway. So HTTP 1, the first version actually came in uh, 1996. It was HTTP uh, before that as well, or or. A, Tim Berners-Lee called it HTTP, this thing that he created in, in the 80s. But, okay. F uh, in nine, yeah, 2015, we shipped the spec for HTTP 2. And 2015 to 2019, not that long, but we're already now talking about how to fix problems and, and introduce HTTP 3. So that's where we're going. And HTTP, uh, just a short reminder, this is how we do a GET from the client to the server, we send the request with a bunch of headers, and we get a response with a response code and a bunch of headers and the body. Uh, that's HTTP, right? So HTTP started done over TCP. TCP, uh, I like to visualize as a sort of chain with individual links like this. It's a protocol that we do, uh, we talk over IP. This is sort of networking basics here. So we get a connection set up with the other end. And we have this three-way handshake. So we have a ping, pong, ping, and then we have an established connection. So that that's a reliable thing. That's so we can send data to the other end. That if we lose a packet, we will retransmit it, and we will send a byte stream. We know that if we send a byte in our end, it'll arrive in the other end in that order, unmodified, or, or the connection can break. But we know it ends up there or not at all. And it's in clear text, right? The first RFC for T TCP was um, published in 1981, so uh, soon reaching 40 years, right? Uh, far earlier than a lot of other protocols. We didn't even have we didn't even have DNS when we got TCP. So, but these days on the web, we're talking not only HTTP then over t that is done uh, over TCP, but we're back basically always talking about HTTPS now. The trend for HTTPS, looking at the Firefox data. Uh, we don't have to care that much about details, but you know, the trend is like that. It's about 80% of all page loads uh, these days are HTTPS, uh, give or take. Uh, the same basic trend is seen from Chrome, uh, split a little, di a little bit differently. Uh, the trend is up there in the 80s somewhere, a little, depending on things, and, and the trend is clearly growing. So over time, we will see even more HTTPS, basically the web, internet, uh, is HTTPS, and is going to be more uh, HTTPS. HTTPS, that is HTTP then done over t uh, with TLS. That is how we made, uh, made HTTPS. So, and the TLS is an old thing, or it's based on SSL and TLS, so it's been around for a long time. Um, it adds uh, privacy and security to the connection. It also adds hand uh, additional handshakes. So we have an another ping pong on top of the TCP one to get that uh, established connection. Uh, right, so we get privacy and security. We know who we are talking to, uh, that 
so that, and, and we know that no, nobody can tamper with the data in, in transit, and we know that um, nobody can eavesdrop on the data uh, on the network. Fine. So then back then to a little reminder how this looks. So we have IP, we have TCP, we do TLS, and we do HTTP over that, right? That's HTTPS, because that's how it works. OK, we had this, as I said, HTTP 1 came 1996. We've done it over TCP for a long time. So back again, HTTP 1.1. The update to HTTP 1 was shipped in 1997. It's an upgrade from the previous version, so we fixed some of the problems with HTTP 1.0 in 1.1. But still, over time, we have created a web. I mean, the web in 1997 wasn't quite the web we have today, right? It was a little bit different. Uh, most of you weren't even around by then. But I'm an old fart. I, I actually was. So uh, back then, we didn't have the web today, right? So today, we have created a web with a lot of objects, a lot of things happening at the same time. So we, uh, um, an ordinary browser today want to open up, want to do a lot of parallel transfers, right, For, to get all the images, all the JavaScripts, everything. And so we need to create a lot of parallel TCP connections to be able to, to deal with this in, H, in an HTTP 1.1 world. Um, creating a lot of short-term TCP connection is, is really a bad use of TCP. So even though HTTP 1.1 was actually an attempt to fix HTTP 1 a little bit, uh, to, to make it use TCP better, because previously you always shut down every connection after each request. But, but the, with the web we have today, we have so many objects, and you have to create so many uh, TCP connections that a browser today it has to shut down the connections almost always. So the median uh, use of, in, in Firefox, looking at the data, you can see that for each connection Firefox opens, in <laughs> the typical number of HTTP requests per connection, is one. So basically, whatever you do with a TCP connection is going to be closed down really, really um, quick. And that's a total waste, right? Because TCP connections are slow in the beginning. It takes a little time to build up speed. And, and you never get up to speed in the HTTP 1.1 world before you close the connection. And we also then introduced the, another thing in HTTP 1.1 where we had it for a long time. We still have it because HTTP 1.1 is not gone, right? Uh, the, HTTP head of line blocking, which means that a client, your browser, Chrome, Firefox, everyone, they limit the number of connections per host name that you do. Typically, you have six connections per host name. And your typical uh, website today have more than six objects on the page, maybe 200 images. We want to get 200 images over six connections. So we have six lines in the supermarket. Which uh, line in the supermarket is the fastest? Really difficult question. So the one ahead of you, uh, the trainee in the cashier desk, is going to be slow, and you don't know which one it is. So that's a head-of-line blocking problem with HTTP. We have a bunch of HTTP requests ahead of you. We, on which line are we going to do the next request? A, a complicated uh, issue for browsers. And we've uh, made a web today when we introduce a lot of fun workarounds. We have sharding, spriting, bundling everything in huge monsters. We can do. Uh, a lot of fun things to overcome these uh, problems we have with HTTP 101. But OK, so in order to fix a lot of those problems, we introduce HTTP 2 with streams. Sort of, you see the stream here. Uh, um, so uh, the this, this spec shipped in 2015. Uh, took a long time from HTTP 1 to HTTP 2. But so a lot of these workarounds we try to fix by introducing protocol mechanisms to do the same things. Instead of doing funny workarounds, we put it into the protocol. So instead of having a lot of connections, we were going to one connection and a lot of streams uh, over that single connection. That made a lot of things better. Um, but we got another thing instead. Uh, the TCP had a line blocking problem. Previously, we had HTTP head of line blocking problem. Now we got the TCP head of line blocking problem, which basically means that if you open a single connection to a host, you open 100 streams from that site, you get 100 parallel images. So you lose one of these IP packages on your network because you have some packet loss. Then all the streams have to wait for that single packet to get retransmitted. The TCP head of line blocking problem, because the TCP connection is still one connection, and we do a lot of streams over them. So until we repair the connection again, all the streams are waiting. So in a, in a loss of network situation, HTTP 2 uh, becomes a really bad protocol. And 
That's not enough, right? Because at the same time, this is a trend that we've been doing in the internet or on the web or everywhere since the beginning called ossification. So the internet is full of boxes, as if you didn't know. Uh, these kind of things, you know, routers, gateways, firewalls, load balancers, whatever. Uh, all, the, all the way from your home until the machine in the other end. There are a lot of boxes over there, and they all run a lot of softwares, and they're all written to handle network data. All they were written to handle network data as it worked back when they shipped, right? When they wrote the software five years ago, seven years ago, ten years ago. Um, so they work on existing stuff, and they put it out there now, and it's going to stick like that for a long time. Or, the, or, or we got the software a long time ago, and it's still there. And they, all these boxes, they know, quotation mark, how, how networks work, right? So they help, help out. They know what, what's wrong and what's right. Wrong or right, then, because no, they don't. They know what was wrong and right back in the day, when, perhaps when they shipped. And they, of course, upgrade much slower than we do in the ages. So we upgrade our browsers, right? It, it upgrades automatically these days. I mean, every few weeks, every few days, I don't know. Whoops, you have a new version. Even the server side, we actually upgrade versions fairly often. Not every week or, or days, but uh, every year, I hope. The ones in the middle, not so much. So we have an internet like this. That's the site we're visiting. That's me. So we're going through this, beam, 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 and those are all middle boxes. They're stuck in time. They don't move. They know, or supposedly they know. So because they know, they prevent a lot of uh, networking innovation. Basically, they forbid us from doing HTTP2 in clear text because they know that uh, when we do anything on TCP port 80, that means HTTP1, right? Of course it does. So a lot of these boxes, they'll, they help out, help out and improve our HTTP1 traffic. So if you speak something else than HTTP1 on that port, you know, they will ruin your traffic. And th this is one of the major obstacles for doing HTTP2 in, in clear text over the internet. We can fix things like in TCP. We can make TCP better. Uh, and that's TFO is a TCP fast open, which is a fancy way to make TCP handshakes a little bit faster or send data earlier in TCP. Doesn't work quite as good either because these boxes, they know that the TFO, TFO bits, which was invented almost 10 years ago now, but they don't know about that bit. So dangerous bit, throw it away. So instead of it being a TCP fast open, it usually turns out to be a very slow TCP open because they throw away packages, so we have to resend them without the bits. And, and this uh, now uh, is so horrible, so nobody is actually enabling TFO by default because it doesn't really work uh, across the internet. Ossification. And the same way then, uh, all those boxes and possibly your NAT or, or gateway router at home is the worst offender here. They only know about TCP and UDP. So, you know, if you want to introduce a new protocol, fancy Daniel's protocol, that would be, you know, a TCP replacement here, it, it doesn't work because no, none of these equipments, they can actually handle those protocols. We're stuck with TCP and UDP and maybe ICMP, but still. This is the world we have. So we can also introduce stuff like, you know, new compression algorithm for HTTP. Ah, does it work? No, we have to only do this over HTTPS when everything is encrypted, then it works. Because if we do it in plain text, these boxes, they know how HTTP compression works. I'll help you. So X percent of the connections are broken because they helped me. <clears throat> so basically, all of this, this is ossification. It really, really uh, stifles and prevents innovation. We can't really change things as long as all these boxes can see the traffic. So make sure that they don't see the traffic. So encrypt more always, right? Just an encrypted byte stream, and they can't help us anymore. <laughs> so what do we do then? In, well, we have this ossification situation, and it's sort of this is an ongoing thing. Whatever we introduce on the internet, if anyone can see that, ossific ossification is the natural outcome of that. It takes a really, really short time until someone has developed something that depends on the, the behavior of the original way to do it. Um, it's complicated, but here is an attempt. Even though I said it was hard to do, here's how. There's a few known companies behind this effort, all participating in the IETF. 
uh, of course, and this is how you do a new transport protocol, uh, attempting to overcome the problems and fixing things in TCP and uh, making everything great. So this is built on experiences and ex experiments and deployments from Google. They started out with their protocol, and here's, here it becomes more complicated than saying HTTP3 a lot of times. Google Quick <coughs> is a completely different protocol than the Quick I'm talking about today. The Google Quick was deployed by Google uh, in 2013. I think they made it public in 2013, so it's been going on for a long time. But the original Google protocol is not the one I'm talking about here, so this is, I'm just making, giving you some background here. Um, they basically sent HTTP two frames over U UDP. Originally, they could even do it in clear text, but uh, they removed that. So it's, but it, they made everything in one layer. You could send HTTP two over UDP to the other end. And they have a fairly widely used client. You may <laughs> have seen it sometimes. Uh, and they also have a few well-used web services. So they're actually in, in a great position to run internet-wide scale uh, experiments like this and to prove that it works. You can actually do this uh, across the internet, and it works, and a lot of people can use it, and you can measure is it better or is it worse than before, and so on, and, and tweak it. So they, they did a good job at this, and they iterated it. They, I think they're on the protocol version 40 or so. So they, they've done it a lot of times, and they tweaked it over time. And a lot of those experiences that they saw and learned from this, they took to the IETF in 2015, and they started a uh, working group the year after, and ever since then we've been struggling to see, uh, can we do it? But I just want to emphasize that the, the, the IETF Quick, that then is the standardized version of the original Google Quick, is a completely different beast. Because uh, one of the first things the IETF said is that, well, we can't just have one sending UDP packets uh, over the network and call it HTTP2, sort of. So we need to split it up. We make a transport protocol and an application protocol. The transport protocol is now the quick protocol. That's basically the TCP replacement. And we have an application protocol on top of that, the HTTP 3, if we want to do HTTP over quick. So while you're at it, while you fix things in the transport protocol, why not fix you know, common TCP problems that we've had, as I said, almost 40 years, right? Um, so we can fix the TCP head of, line head of line blocking problem I mentioned. So when we lose a packet along the way, if we have 100 streams up and we lose a packet, why not make sure that we know to which streams the lost packet belongs so all the other streams can actually continue. So now with Quick in a lost in network situation, we can lose a few packets, but only those streams that are actually affected by those lost packages will have to wait. The other streams can go on. So the streams are independent of each other and independent of the main connection which is a, a, a big change from TCP. We can also fix things like uh, doing faster handshakes. So with Quick, you can actually have zero RTT handshake if you had a previous connection with the server. Just open a new connection and send data already without even a round trip. And that also makes it easier to, uh, or better to do early data, so you can actually fix those problems I mentioned with TFO, so you can actually send data much earlier, which in, in, a, in a web context, of course, is what you want, because your browser can actually send a request and you can get more data earlier. You can actually win a few round trips compared to your older versions, which could be many milliseconds for, for your site. <coughs> um, quick also d doesn't really connect or associate your connection with your IP anymore. So you know the old problem with the TCP connection that you have associated with an IP with your network device is no longer true with Quick. So you can actually easy migrate your Quick connections between your network interfaces. So it's actually very easy now to migrate connections from like your uh, physical Ethernet to your Wi-Fi or from your Wi-Fi to your mobile connection or wh whatever. So it's actually a, a much better uh, suitable protocol for the, for the modern kind of devices. And uh, it's more encryption always. So it's much more encrypted stuff than even uh, TL TCP with TLS. So even less things are actually visible on the wire in an attempt to make sure that this it's better future-proofed to, to make sure that we can actually change things going forward as well. Um, right. So how do you do this? Well, we build it on top of UDP. And when I say on top of UDP, it means that basically we, we leave TCP and UDP. They are the only ones, right? We, we will never change that, or at some point maybe, but not now. 
so we basically treat UDP as if it was IP. We just build on top of UDP. So we build a reliable protocol in user space, a little bit like TCP and TLS on top of that. And I want to emphasize then that UDP is, of course, not reliable, but quick is. So UDP, you know, that's just the uh, connectionless sending data as fast as you can. Maybe it will end up in the, in the other end. Maybe it'll reorder. You don't know and you don't care because that's what UDP is. But to do quick on this, you add your own sort of TCP-like uh, stack on top of UDP to handle things like reordering, uh, packet loss, and pacing, and everything else that you want to do with a reliable transport protocol. <laughs> so th this uh, quick sets, you set up connection exactly like you do with TCP, connection between two peers, and then you have streams within this connection, pretty much like HTTP2 has, you know, streams within the connection. But here you have it on the transport layer, basically a TCP with streams. So the streams are many logical sort of connections within the big connection. So you can send data with, set up one connection and you can send individual streams and they are independent in Quake, so, which has the fun effect that you can actually, uh, a web server can, for example, offer two images and you can download them in, here's image A, here's image B, and the client can start to download those images. But if you have a packet loss somewhere, maybe the, one of the transfers are slowed down, but the other ones are, are not. So you can actually end end up getting them in a different order, because the streams are independent, but they're reliable and in order in themselves. Independent, which basically has the effect that uh, the way you did it with TCP, one connection, here are, if you have then two streams here, they are the green and the red ones, they are still linked in the chain, right? So if you drop one of the green ones here, the, the red one can't continue, because we need all the packages for, for the TCP to continue. But in a quick connection, you have one quick connection, but the chains, the streams, are totally independent. So even if you lose a, a yellow link here, it doesn't matter for the blue one. The blue one can still go on, even if the, the yellow one is gone. And, and the yellow one will continue when, when it gets, the packet gets retransmitted. So, and that is then, quick is the transport layer. And of course, then, so you add stop stuff on top of the transport layer. And, and, um, um, of course, th that's good because then you can do your application layers and you get every application layer you, don't, you do on top of Quick and then get streams for free. And that can be any protocol, right? But, but HTTP is on the only protocol that anyone is actually working on right now as, a pro as, as an application protocol on top of the transport protocol Quick. And I think it basically it is to limit the workload because the working group has had uh, rather a <laughs> big problem anyway to actually ship this. So I think it's good that they've limited the, the, the protocol work. But there's definitely a whole slew of other protocols waiting to, as soon as there's going to be a published, published version of Quick, there's going to be more application protocols uh, tweaked to run over Quick instead of TCP. DNS is one of the uh, most commonly mentioned one, perhaps. WebRTC. So there are m many things we can do. So HTTP 3, then, that's the application layer protocol done over Quick. Quick, then, being the, we do it instead of TCP. So what HTTP, it's the same. HTTP is always the same, but different. So, you know, we do request, we have headers, we have a body, perhaps, and uh, we get the ba thing back, we have a response code, we get headers back, and we have a body back, like that. That's the same thing. That's the same HTTP we've had since, well, since HTTP 1. HTTP before HTTP 1, it was actually broken. But before that, 1996, we've done it like this. So you can still treat it like this. If you're, if you're a developer, if you're a user, you can still imagine HTTP to be like this. But we're changing, again, how we transmit HTTP over the wire. So it, it, it is the same, but different, right? HTTP 1, we did everything in ASCII over TCP, basically. HTTP 2, we did it binary, and we did streams within HTTP 2. And now we do it again binary, and we move the streams into Quick. But it's yeah, same, but different. So, again, back to how things actually work. IP, this is how we did it in the past, or we still do it. So, HTTP 1 or HTTP 2, right? TCP, TLS. You can actually skip TLS, right, if you want to have a clear text version. And now we do it over UDP instead. We add quick 
which is actually using TLS 1.3 in there. I'll get back to that uh, because it's, it's fun. Um, and we had HP 3 on top of that. So uh, a lot of new things, right? And the streams are now in the quick layer. It was previously in the HTTP 2 layer, or still is. So uh, looking at then, oh, how does HTTP 3 then compare to HTTP 2? I mean, from a pure HTTP standpoint. Yeah, well, they use different transports. We get streams. One of them can do a clear text version, but in practice, you never use it because the browsers don't support it because of the ossification. Uh, you have independent streams in one of the other, and uh, they have heavy compression. We can do server push, and we can do early data much better. But that's not going to be. Uh, you don't have to care too much about that when you're writing your sites or, or clients or anything. And you can get faster handshakes in HP3 uh, than you can in HP2. So, HP3 versus HTTP2, they are uh, very similar in features and uh, expectation of what you're going to get or, or use. But the, it changes everything underneath, so that's, <laughs> that's the new version. So it's, it is on, on the wire, and impl uh, the implementations are completely different. There's not a single byte that is uh, the same thing as HTTP2, really. So it, how is it going to um, deliver? Are you going to get a faster site, or is everything going to be nice and great? So there are faster handshakes, much faster handshakes. So uh, you will certainly, or a client should certainly be able to get send. In a, in a web browser situation, you should, should be able to get your requests out earlier, data back earlier, so websites should be able to be faster. It has early data that works, and you have independent streams that makes it much better, a much better protocol in, in bad network situations, which, uh, ironically, then, is usually not people in, in, in the Western world because we're a bit spoiled with really, really fast networks that are always good. So we're possibly the ones who will gain the least by this, but uh, the ones in the far end of the tail, they, they get the best benefits of this. But, and I, I don't show you any numbers here because I don't have any updated numbers. There have been a lot of numbers presented by Google in the past, for example, for their Google Quick versions, but since this is so much different than Google Quick, I, didn't, I don't want to repeat those numbers because I'm not sure that they will actually match. So HTTPS, you know, HTTPS colon slash slash, what does it mean? Uh, uh, they're everywhere, <laughs> as if you didn't know. Uh, we, don't, we can't change HTTPS colon slash slash URLs, right? Uh, we have invested quite a lot of that. So they exist, we, we use them everywhere, and every, we're adding more and more every. But HTTPS colon slash slash, that implies TCP, right, and TLS on port 443 by default. And I just mentioned here how this is not TCP. So how do you actually switch to an HTTP 3 world from the HTTPS colon slash slash world, which implies something on, over TCP? Uh, complicated and it's going to be even more complicated than it sounds. So we have this service over there. We introduced, or this is an actually an old header in HTTP, uh, introduced a few years ago, which basically says a server can actually tell the client that I am also available over there on this protocol on that port number or, or and this version of the protocol for another uh, n seconds. So that's how this is me meant to bootstrap into HTTP 3. Your ordinary server will tell you my HTTP server is over there for another week, year, second, whatever, and hopefully uh, more than a few seconds. And the, and the clients will cache this, so the next time you go to your site, it'll use your HTTP 3 site instead. That's the theory. I'll, I'll get back to why that is problematic. Um, so OK, sure, cool, better uh, in some ways and, and uh, faster maybe. Uh, <clears throat> there are some challenges, and I'll, <laughs> I'll narrow it down to the eight ones that I, I want to tell you about. Uh, okay, so fast speed internet over UDP. Did it before? Uh, no, we never did that before. Well, Qu uh, Google Quick has done it for a while, so we have sort of, it's been, it's been done. Uh, Google mentioned actually a few years ago that 7% of the internet traffic was using Quick, so a, a lot of things work over UDP, but somewhere around 3 to 7%, depending on who you ask and who you, how you measure, uh, of the connections, they will fail. And they will fail because your organizations, your companies, and, and your uh, network administrators, they will block UDP traffic 
uh, because uh, who want to have that, right? So you use that for DNS and maybe NTP. Uh, no, no fast internet. So, and I think the, the more we go into enterprise now, it's going to be even worse because eh, UDP does only DDoS attacks, but very close it. So we have a lot of problems with a lot of failures. So we need a reliable fallback algorithms. So every browser that is going to attempt HTTP 3, they also have to, they have to do that in the background, right? So to be able to keep doing the HTTP 1 or HTTP 2 in case the HTTP 3 one fails. And since the blocking of UDP is going to be based on where you are, right? You go to, you sit at home and you get your HTTP 3 connection up and you bring your laptop to your coffee shop and you open your laptop again, uh, reconnect to the site. Will it work this time? I don't know. You bring your laptop to work and open up that. Will that work? Maybe, maybe not. So we have a lot of uh, fun raising many connections against each other uh, into the future, trying the old one and the new one and see which one works. Um, and unfortunately, this uh, fallback requirement, we need to be able to fall back. It also makes it very easy to block, right? Because what, if you block it, the clients will just fall back anyway. So yeah, you can just, just as well block it. It's dangerous. Um, it's very CPU intensive as it is right now. So if you deploy this in your server, you can uh, expect somewhere around two to three times the CPU usage for the same bandwidth, which is a horrible <laughs> thing for most server, uh, servers uh, and deployments. And it is, to a huge extent, explained by the very unoptimized UDP stacks. Because again, we never did this at internet scale. We haven't used UDP for this. Nobody has sort of uh, tried to saturate uh, very many gigabyte uh, bits, pipes before. So we, ha we have uh, work to do here. And also, not only UDP stacks, but also you know, hardware offloading and things to do the crypto better in hardware. So we have, we have, um, we have work to do. <coughs> so uh, maybe the, one of the bigger obstacles here is the funny TLS layer. And sure. Uh, <laughs> TLS is always funny, right? So, uh, but okay, in this case, I, I mentioned briefly that TLS is using TLS 1.3, and it does. So it, it basically based on the technologies that we have already tried and tested and proven in the TLS 1.3. Fine, that's good, right? So we're, re we're reusing technology to make everything better. But TLS, the TLS layer in Quick is also slightly different. So we're actually using TLS differently this time. Instead of using the TLS records that we do in, in TCP, we're using the TLS messages, which is the tiny pieces within the TLS records. And no, none of the ordinary TLS libraries actually offer API, APIs for this. So, oh, right, so we just need to new APIs in every TLS library out there. And we also need some other secrets and stuff that uh, nor, nor, uh, normal TCP doesn't use for, for TLS. So we basically need new APIs for all TLS libraries. Uh, and we know how long time that can take until that is shipped and is available in Ori or all our favorite Linux distros. It's not quite there yet. Like OpenSSL, they haven't even merged the patch yet. So I think um, we have some time left until we can actually deploy this in, in your, your favorite Linux distros. Uh, and of course, we have another challenge that all these quick stacks are user land. They are all you know, libraries or servers in user land, so we have a lot of different implementations. So we have, a, um, we have different uh, interrupt situations, and we have different APIs, because, of course, we don't have a unified quick API either. So you have to get married to one of those quick libraries and, and write your application for that, and hope that it'll be the one that uh, will stick around for a while. Um, yeah, and of course, lack of tooling. Wireshark is pretty much on top of, of their game, and offer uh, quick analyzing uh, if you run it in their version from Git master, but pretty much nothing else. And you know, we've been accustomed to TCP things, you know, window sizes and segment numbers and everything for a long time, and all of that is gone now. All of that is replaced by all those quick mechanics instead. So I think it'll take a while until we have the, the tooling and the everything getting, getting used to that. So um, some challenges to, to overcome. Uh, they won't prevent us from going there, but they will be challenges and slow us down. And when will this ship? Um, so this is done by the IETF working group, 
called Quick Working Group. Uh, and you can read that charter, and this says milestones. We will ship it in July 2019. So wait a minute. Uh, right. <laughs> Yeah, that was a few months ago. Uh, so, yeah, no, it's not shipped yet, and it, it's not even close to ship yet. So, so right now, uh, yeah, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, I say early 2020. Yeah, anyone? Uh, we'll see. So, uh, implementations. Sure, a lot of uh, if implementation. There's a, a big interest in this. So, all, all the big ones, I mentioned all, uh, a lot of brand names before. All of them have uh, implementations and code going, and there are a lot of interrupt meetings, and there are libraries to test. There, you can join the fun and download and everything. There's a lot of activity going on all the time. There's no browser yet that you can try that actually have this uh, enabled for users. I know that both Chrome and Safari have said that they have versions in-house, so I'm just sort of I'm trying to get them to uh, race for who's going to do it first to allow us to try it out. Um, but none of them have done it yet, so we'll see. But so neither has one, uh, any of the bigger open source servers or IS either. Caddy has a version that is, uh, I think they're going to release soon that can actually try it out. Uh, Curl has a version in, in Git that is going to be released next week. So trying out HTTP3 in Curl, you just uh, enable it in when you build it. H3, H322 is the name of the protocol right now because it's the draft 22 of the protocol, so it's not going to be the final one. It's going to be draft 23 soon, and who knows how many drafts before it's done. Alt, uh, alt service support is there in curl. You know the one that said the service is over there thing? It has to do that to bootstrap into HTTP3, doing it the protocol-specific way. We base our support on two different quick libraries, so you can actually pick which one because why not? Uh, and fallback is really tricky, so I don't do that in curl yet at all. So just it fails if you try HTTP3 and it's blocked. So you can try it out now. It actually works pretty solidly. Uh, against the, there are a bunch of different implementations, and they have test servers up, so you can actually try HTTP3 for real today if you want to. It's fun. <coughs> Looking into the crystal ball for the future, how is this going to work out? Uh, I don't think I need to actually say this, but. It'll take time, you know, all those challenges. They're not really, they're still challenges, so we have them ahead of us. We have to work them out one by one until we're, we're ahead of them or, or have them under control. So it'll take a long time. And all those, you know, the CPU performance and everything, maybe, maybe a lot of servers won't really see the benefit here, or it'll be a huge uh, investment to actually go there. And a problematic, how do you switch on your servers suddenly to do a, uh, encrypted UDP at high speed, you know, random junk coming in, in over UDP. It looks exactly like a DDoS attack. So how do you handle that in your server side? Uh, so I'm pretty sure that some will stick to HTTP 2 for, for the time being, because, mm, yeah. But Quick is here for the long term. It's, a, it's a seriously a transport protocol replacement for TCP. The term post-TCP world has been mentioned more than once in, in the IETF, so maybe Quick is going to be Maybe Quick is going to replace TCP long term. So maybe it doesn't matter if you have a few problems now. Maybe we work them out. Maybe Quick will take on properly until years into the future. But it's still coming here, and it's made for the long term. And when Quick version 1 has shipped, there's going to be more work on making Quick version 2. And there's a lot of people interested in doing things like adding multipath or forward error correction, unreliable streams, because uh, <laughs> why not reintroduce UDP within Quick that is done over UDP? But no, but you can u then use uh, perhaps both reliable and unreliable streams within the same connection. And of course, more application protocols over the Quick version. Is, that's uh, a given is going to happen as soon as Quick ships. So the takeaways from everything I've been, you, know, you can wake up now, you're in the back. Uh, so it is coming soon. It's going to be encrypted all the time. It's going to be done over Quick, which is done over UDP. Uh, there's a lot of challenges, so it's not going to happen uh, anytime soon to, to big scale. We will certainly see the big ones, Google's and Facebook's and the similar ones. They are going to be very fast on this. They're going to be number one, and they're going to deploy it and ship it as soon as they can, maybe early 2020. We'll see. Uh, I wrote a little book about it. Or it's not a book, more like a big document uh, that explains this. Um, yeah, so I'm out of time. but. Uh, if you have questions, think about it. 